is halfway through cycle 24's approach to solar maximum, a three to four year period of dense activity in the form of sunspots, solar flares, and other newly discovered behavior, all part of a regular roughly 11 year solar cycle. These cycles, based off of the waxing and waning of highly polarized blemishes appearing on the surface of the sun, called sunspots, have been observed for thousands of years, beginning in early China, but it is only the most recent 400 years of sunspots that we have a reliable record of. What is interesting is when you look at a mapping of the sunspot activity since 1755, while the 11-year cycles predominate, other cycles begin to make themselves evident as well. Take cycles 5 and 6, which began right around the turn of the century, and compare them with the cycle 23 and our current cycle 24. The periodicities show up in more than sunspots alone. For example, here is a map put together by David Archibald on the emission of radio waves from the sun, what is called the F10.7 flux. Here you can see a similar minimum trajectory in cycle 24's activity relative to cycles 18 through 24. Proof that there are many ways to speak the language of the sun, in 1976 John Eddy made a forecast of the sun's behavior, not into the future, but through reverse engineering mapping out the last 1,000 years of the sun's activity by combining radiocarbon dating of tree growth, frequency of auroral occurrences, ancient manuscripts, old literature, and modern data, and came up with a number of potential cycles. Now immediately two questions come to mind. What do these periodicities mean for us on Earth? We know nominally that in the recent past these minimums, along with others like the water minimum and the spore minimums, correspond to lower temperatures on Earth, including what was referred to as the 16th century Little Ice Age. But what other effects does this change in solar radiation induce on Earth? The second question is, what are the long-term periodicities that exist in our galactic and extragalactic environment that the Sun is responding to? One way to begin to understand what otherwise appear as discrete, strange weather events is to take these phenomena and think of them together as a system and begin mapping them against these larger periodicities that we are a part of beyond our planet and beyond our solar system.